All right, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Git using the command line uh, using the CS50 IDE. First, I'm going to walk you through the basic installation and configuration, which mostly is done for you already. Uh, then we're gonna create a repository. A repository is a collection of code and code artifacts uh, that have a complete history. So you can keep track of every single change that you make to every single file throughout the history of the project. That way you can track the progress. And if your project ends up having a bug somewhere, maybe you can track it down what change caused that bug. Then we're gonna push that repository out to GitHub. Uh, the, Git, uh, Git is a distributed version control system, meaning that multiple versions of a repository can exist on different computers. There will be one that exists on your computer, or in this case, the CS50 IDE, uh, their file system. Uh, and then there is the one that exists on the remote system, the github.com uh, website. Uh, and uh, you can push changes back and forth between these two things. It's distributed so that you can have a, a complete history with every single copy of the repository. So you could have hundreds, thousands of people working on the same project and they all have their own copy and are working independently. Then I'll walk you through making changes to your code repository, pushing them back out to GitHub so that they're saved in the remote uh, repository. And then I'll briefly talk about how to collaborate with others if you choose to. So installation and configuration is already taken care of for you mostly. Uh, Git, is, uh, Git as a command line tool is already installed on the CS50 IDE. Uh, but there are two uh, points of configuration. You need to set your email and you need to set your name uh, before you get started. Uh, the instructions for doing that are in uh, the handout. So please make sure that you do that before you, uh, you proceed with anything else. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a repository. Now remember we're in this miscellaneous directory right now. And there's that single hello file, hello.c file. Uh, remember if we wanna look at uh, the contents of that file, then it's just simply printing out hello world, okay? So to create, to make this folder and everything in it and every all of its subdirectories, everything uh, into a repository, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is get init. Uh, now init is short for initialization. And you'll see up here that it's introduced a new folder dot get. That's where it's storing all that repository information, all the history and all the metadata. Do not touch this. Uh, it's something that is internally used by Git to keep track of everything. If you go and start making changes, that means that you are screwing up the history or you're screwing up the metadata for your, uh, for your repository. Now, what we need to do is we need to make an association between this Git repository and a remote repository on GitHub. So I'm going to go ahead and go to github.com. And up in the right here, I'm going to create a new repository. I'll just go ahead and call it hello for now. I'll make it public. A lot of your stuff, well, you'll wanna make that private uh, because you don't wanna be sharing code uh, necessarily. Now, there are many things in this course where you can collaborate. There might be some stuff that you cannot collaborate or we don't want you to collaborate with. Uh, and it, just make sure that your code is safe and uh, other students can't access it, you may want to make something private. If you don't care or if collaboration is encouraged, you can go ahead and make it public. There's a couple of other things that you can create here. I'm going to go ahead and skip those steps for now. Once this repository is created, it'll actually tell you what else you need to do to make that association. I'll walk you through it though. Uh, but otherwise, there's the URL. Your URL will be different. All right now we're back over here now of course i just initialized the repository uh i need to actually add that hello.c file to it so that it is part of the repository uh so i'm going to go ahead, i'm just going to do a, a really quick shortcut here git add all so if i had multiple files multiple directories i just want them all added all at once now, that then, again, in the Unix world, no news is good news. So that added everything. What I can do is I can go ahead and commit those changes. Uh, and to do that, it's git commit. And then I, with every commit, you want to give a meaningful message. Why are you committing this code? Are you fixing a bug? Are you adding a feature? Why did you commit this stuff? Now, for the first one here, it's not going to matter that much. So I'll just say that it was an initial commit. 
It's the first commit of the repository. Again, it's git commit. The hyphen M here is for the message. Messages in general are optional. Sometimes uh, configurations have been set up to make them required, uh, but it's always best practice to have a meaningful uh, descriptive message of what this commit involves. There was one file change. There were 16 lines that were inserted into that file. Now that only commits it to the local repository. If I go back over here to GitHub uh, and I hit refresh, of course it hasn't changed. I've only changed my local repository. Right. What I need to do now is I need to push those changes out to this, uh, th this remote repository that's hosted on GitHub. To do that, I need to associate these two repositories with each other. Uh, where do you want to actually push these changes? And so to do that, I would need to add a remote. Git remote add origin. Uh, origin is basically just the name. Uh, the remote is a remote repository that you can push and pull changes to and from. And you need to provide it with the URL. GitHub.com. This will end up being your username. And then whatever you named your remote repository. In this case, it was hello. Right? Now, sometimes they do ask you to use .git. That's usually optional. Right? Again, the login would be replaced with your actual login, your GitHub login. Again, no news is good news. So now those are associated with each other. Now I need to push those changes out to GitHub. Git push you origin master. Right. And of course, it'll ask you for your username and password. There. Now, if I go back over to GitHub and hit refresh, you'll see that the changes have now actually been pushed out here. There's that hello.c file, okay? Now, the handout does contain a link uh, that you can use to uh, set up your Git account so that it is it uh, it, it saves an, at what's called an SSH key. Uh, so that you don't have to provide your uh, username and password every single time you push something. Now let's go ahead and go back to our repository here. And now I want to make sure that it, everything works. I'll go ahead and compile that, uh, that, that program again, and I'll run it. Everything works. But remember that it, uh, that it adds this a.out file over here. That's not necessarily something that I want to check into my local repository and push to the... Uh, uh, remote repository because the executable file that I just created is only going to run on the CS50 IDE here. Uh, if I take it over to my Mac, I would have to recompile it. If I took it over to a Windows uh, computer, I would have to recompile it using a C compiler for Windows, etc. cetera. Uh, so I don't necessarily want to check in binary files like this. Uh, what I can do is I can configure Git to ignore them. What I'll do is I'll create a new file here called dot git ignore. And what I can do is I can put in any file name or directory or there are there's a, there, there's a rich syntax here that you can say ignore this directory and everything in it uh, and, and a bunch of other nice things uh, that you can do with this. But otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and ignore that a.out file. Right. Now, I do have to take that git ignore file and I have to make it part of my repository. So I'll repeat the process that we just did. I will git add but instead of adding all, what I want to, you can also add an individual file here. So I just want to add the git ignore file. I will commit that with a descriptive message. And then I'll push it. And as you saw, I had to type my password again. It's not going to show you your password for security reasons. 
If I look back over here and hit refresh, I can see that both of those files are there now. Now it's ignoring that a.out file. So if I went ahead and said git add all, right, then it's actually not going to add that a.out file. To see the status of the files, I can use git status. And it says that my branch is, there's nothing changed uh, because it was ignoring that a.out file. Even though that a.out file is new, uh, there's nothing changed. Uh, now let me demonstrate you, uh, to you what a git status actually does if you do have changes. So instead of hello world, I'll go ahead and print my name. Save that file. Now let me go ahead and use git status. It says that the hello.c file has been modified. Uh, and it's been modified, but it hasn't been committed to my repository, and it hasn't been pushed out to the remote repository. There's a whole line of, you know, it's not just saving a file. Saving a file is saving changes that saves the file to the file system, but it has no effect on the actual repository. Uh, this is because you'll likely want to make multiple edits uh, and test things and get them down to where, okay, this is this is good. Now I'm ready to commit this. Or uh, you're, you're working throughout the day, you're making hundreds of different edits. Uh, and then at the end of the day, okay, well, now I want to save my work. Just saving it may not be enough. If you, you want to check that in, you want to commit that to your repository. All right. You can also look at the differences. Let me go ahead and clear this out. You can go git diff, which is short for difference. And let's ask what the differences are with the hello.c. The differences between the file that I just saved, changing it to my name, and the differences between the file uh, contents that are actually in my repository. And you can see that red here, minus, is something that I deleted. Green with a plus is something that I added. So basically, I changed this line. So again, let's go ahead and commit those changes. I will go ahead and go with add all here to show you that it's not going to add that a.out file. There's a modified hello.c file. That's what's called a staged change. In other words, I've added it to uh, get, uh, Git's index. Uh, Git is aware of that file. It's aware that there's a change. And it's, it's like a step before you actually commit it. So now let's go ahead and commit it. I changed the message to my name. And we'll go ahead and push it out to GitHub. Once successful, I'll go ahead and hit refresh. And you can see that it's now printing my name over here. Uh, you can fi find out the whole history of a file uh, just by looking at it. There's the initial commit. There's the changed my, uh, message to my name. And you can go back and look at each individual. What did it look like before I made that change? Well, there I added, this is the initial commit. So I added all 16 of these lines and it's showing you that they're all green. Uh, well, what did this commit change? This commit changed that one line, just like I saw on the command line, but it's a little bit nicer interface here on the, uh, on the web. Uh, it changed that one line into this line. So to complete your first hack, you're going to have to actually collaborate with somebody else. So Git is a distributed version control system, meaning that it is intended for other people to collaborate so that two people can commit changes and push them to a common repository. And just the opposite, if you're pushing stuff out, then you can pull those changes back to your local repository. I won't, I won't go through the full process and said uh, the, uh, the handout uh, walks you through how to do that. But I will show you that up here, if you go to the root of your uh, repository on GitHub and go to settings, manage access, then you can invite a collaborator here. And you'll have to do this to complete your hack because we want you to walk through the process of pulling those changes that somebody else made. Again, you'll have your uh, repository. Uh, your partner will check the, uh, clone that from GitHub. 
uh, and make changes to it, push them back up to GitHub, and then you'll pull those changes down to your own repository. If you need help, of course, we have online office hours.